Hello friends, I am Dr. Ankit Goel, Consultant Psychiatrist and Nationwide Faculty for Psychiatry. Today, in this video, we will discuss Nimhan's previous paper 2019. We will discuss some of the few important questions and also discuss something extra about them as these questions are seldomly asked in the paper. So let us begin with the first question. All of the following are risk factor for schizophrenia except A. Children born to young mothers B. Obstetric complication C. Winter birth and D. Cannabis use So the correct answer is option A that is children born to young mothers. So let us discuss some of the important risk factors. First important risk factor is the paternal age. So the risk is higher in the offsprings who are born to fathers who at the time of conceptions were older than 50 years of age. That is the father's age was more than 50 at the time of conception. Second important risk factor is the season of birth. Children are more likely who are born in winter and early spring are at a higher risk of developing schizophrenia in the later life rather than who are born in spring, late spring and summers. One of the important infections that is influenza infection is considered an important risk factor for development of schizophrenia. So again a very important point. Next important risk factor is obstetric complications. So complications occurring during pregnancy like bleeding, preeclampsia, abnormal fetal growth and development like premature birth, low birth weight or congenital malformations and complications occurring during delivery like uterine atony, asphyxia and emergency caesarean section all are again considered important risk factors for development of schizophrenia. Other important risk factors are urban birth and upbringing. So it is considered that it is an increased risk in urban setting. So a child born in urban setting and brought up in an urban setting is at a higher risk of development of schizophrenia. Migration another important risk factor. In fact there is an increased rate in development of schizophrenia in the second generation who are born in the new homeland important to remember now stressful events so early childhood trauma like sexual abuse are again important risk factors now this is important cannabis use especially who are homozygous for COMT gene that is catechol O methyl transferase now it is seen that patients who are homozygous to the valine allele are more likely to develop psychosis and indeed schizophrenia even after a single exposure to cannabis than the homozygous individuals who are homozygous for methionine allele very important cannabis use now let us discuss the next question all of the following are correctly matched side effects of antipsychotics except now antipsychotics and in fact the psychopharmacology is a very important topic to be read for Nimhan's exam. So let us come to the options. So we have to mark which is not correct, which is incorrect. So options are A, clozapine and they have given the side effect as hyperprolactinemia. B, haloperidol, the side effect dystonia. C, chlorpromazine side effect dry mouth and ziprasidone side effect QTC prolongation. So the right answer is option A that is clozapine side effect hyperprolactinemia which is incorrect. Now there are two important classification of antipsychotics. So they are classified into two classes broadly first generation antipsychotics or also known as typical antipsychotics while the second class is the second generation antipsychotics or the atypical antipsychotics. Now important is the difference of the mechanism of action. While the mechanism of action of the first generation is they are D2 antagonist, the second generation are both D2 and 5-HT2A antagonist that is dopamine as well as serotonin antagonist. Now first generation are considered to be effective for the positive symptoms, positive symptoms like delusions, and hallucinations while the second generation are considered to be effective for both positive symptoms and negative symptoms of schizophrenia again important to remember the negative symptoms now there are more side effects like the extra pyramidal symptoms with first generation antipsychotics while these are less with the second generation 
antipsychotics. Similarly, hyperprolactinemia is again more common with the first generation and less common with the second generation. Now, interestingly, the metabolic side effects like hypertension, weight gain, diabetes and hyperlipidemia. These are all important metabolic side effects which are less with the first generation and are more with the second generation antipsychotics. Again important to remember. Now let us discuss some of the important antipsychotics and associated features of them. So first are the first generation antipsychotics. We will discuss few of them. So first is chlorpromazine. Now other than the D2 antagonist it has a high alpha 1 blocking tendency and as well as very important to remember anticholinergic side effects. There may be hypersensitivity reaction associated with chlorpromazine and also can lead to cholestatic jaundice. Second important drug is thioridazine. Again it has a anticholinergic property as well as there are some important side effects related to the eye which we should remember with thioridazine which include blue pigmentation of the retina, lenticular opacity and retinal degeneration. Also it increases the QTC interval. Now haloperidol again a very important first generation antipsychotic it is in fact the most potent and in fact hence it has a highest or one of the high EPS potential. Other than antipsychotic use in the psychotic illness it is also used sometimes useful in delirium especially for agitation in Tourette syndrome and in Huntington's chorea. These are some of the other uses of haloperidol. Now next are the second generation antipsychotic. Again we will discuss some of the few antipsychotics. First is risperidone. Now we know that the extra pyramidal side effects are less common with second generation but out of the second generation risperidone has an increased risk of EPS. Also elevation of prolactin. Olanzapine again has metabolic side effect. In fact one of the high highest of metabolic side effect. Ziprasidone is associated with prolonged QTC interval while clo close up in. Now this is a very interesting molecule. Now it has common side effects like Cialoria. In fact this is one of the most common side effects of close up in. It has weight gaining tendency. In fact out of all the second generation it has the maximum weight gaining tendency or maximum metabolic side effect. Again a very important side effect include constipation. Now clozapine is used only for, so clozapine is the drug which is reserved for treatment resistant schizophrenia. So it is mostly used for treatment resistant schizophrenia because of the serious side effects which are seizures agranulocytosis and myocarditis which you can remember from the mnemonic SAM. So these are important serious side effects which may be in fact lead to death. So one should be very careful while using clozapine. Another important name one should remember is cane. Very important as in the in the 1970s clozapine was banned because of the death due to agranulocytosis in the patient but it was reintroduced after the study conducted by Kane et al who also gave the criteria for treatment resistant schizophrenia. So very important name to remember with clozapine. Now the third question choose the incorrect combination out of the following. So they have given clusters of personality disorder and specific personality disorder. Option A cluster A paranoid personality disorder, B option cluster B borderline personality disorder, C cluster C histrionic personality disorder and D cluster C anxious personality disorder. So we have to choose the incorrect combination. So the right answer is option C that is cluster C and histrionic personality disorder because we know histrionic personality disorder is a personality disorder of cluster B. Now let us discuss the personality disorders and the clusters. So DSM has divided personality disorders into three important clusters. Cluster A, cluster B and cluster C. Now important personality disorders in the cluster A are paranoid personality disorder, schizoid and schizotypal. Important to remember that schizotypal personality disorders are among the disorders, personality disorder which have one of the highest risk of development of schizophrenia. 
very important cluster b personality disorders include antisocial personality disorders borderline personality disorder histrionic personality disorders and narcissistic personality disorder while cluster c personality disorders include avoidant anxious personality disorder dependent personality disorder and obsessive compulsive personality disorder now each of them have characteristic traits so the group characteristic of cluster a is that they are odd or eccentric cluster b have a common trait of that the patient appears to be dramatic emotional or behave in a erratic manner while cluster c are anxious or fearful these are important group characteristic of each of these cluster now let us discuss the next important again a very important topic suicide which has been many a times asked in the exams now which of the following is not a high risk factor of suicide so the options are a previous suicide attempt option b substance use option c chronic illness and option d young age so the right answer is option d that is young age it is not a high risk factor for suicide now let us discuss this is again very important what are the high risk factors now first we'll discuss the demographic factors so age more than 45 years is considered to be a high risk factor male gender in comparison to female again are considered to have a high risk because it is considered that males may use more lethal methods for suicide now again divorced separated or widow people are at a higher risk person who is unemployed or who has poor relationships are also at a higher risk of suicide now in the health related factors person having chronic illness like some chronic pain tumor person with substance use now person with certain psychiatric illnesses like depression psychosis or severe personality disorder are also at a higher risk now this is very important hopelessness person having negative views about the future if person has hopelessness again it is a important risk factor in fact one of the important of the all risk factors among the suicidal activities person who has frequent or intense or prolonged suicidal ideation one should be very careful at there is a higher risk of suicide now multiple attempts of suicide again is a very very important risk factor in fact we'll discuss two of the important risk factors so person who is planning or the he has already planned the way to suicide again is an important risk factor someone using lethal methods like for example gunshot is again at a higher risk factor a suicidal note present is again a important risk factor now if asked which is the most important risk factor so out of all these some one of the most important risk factor is a previous suicide attempt and one of the second most important risk factors is presence of hopelessness very very two important risk factors also just to tell that the current rate of suicide in india so the current rate of suicide in india according to the latest data of the national crime research bureau ncrb is 10.6 per lakh population so this is the important rate suicide rate also the most common method again these questions may be asked so most common method of suicide is again in india most common is hanging followed by poisoning so again two important points to remember very very important points so these were the important topics and we will we shall wish you all the best for the exam if you want to join us on facebook you can join our group psychiatry by dr ankit goel also you can like and subscribe our youtube channel dr ankit goel md psychiatry thank you and all the very best